welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be preparing potassium metaperiodate via the oxidation of potassium iodate. First, I've weighed out 50 milliliters of distilled water in this graduated cylinder, and I'm going to add it to this 500 milliliter beaker on the hot plate stirrer. Now that that's been added, I'm going to put a stir bar in there. Now, 16.8 grams of potassium iodate are added to the water. This most likely will not dissolve, and that's okay. Now, stirring is turned on, and 15 grams of potassium hydroxide are added, and the solution heated until boiling. Next, 23 grams of potassium persulfate are added to the hot liquid. This may dissolve, and some gas may be evolved, but it shouldn't be too much. You may see a slight color change to a yellow or tan color, and this is normal. Of course, try not to spill <laughs> as much as I did. Okay, that's a lot of bubbles. A lot about what is going on. Uh, strange. Seems there's a fair amount of uh, what seems to be oxygen being evolved. Uh, other than that, seems to be staying in check for the most part. Now, I'm going to add a further 15 grams of solid potassium hydroxide very, very slowly to this solution, or rather mixture. As you can see, the addition, or rather the dissolution, of the potassium hydroxide is extremely violent due to the exotherm produced. So, of course, do this very slowly. I'm actually going to get a respirator on because this is putting out a little bit of mist. Next, 150 milliliters of boiling distilled water is added to the mixture in which the potassium sulfate produced in the reaction will dissolve. Next, 
Next, this solution is going to be cooled in a water bath. If we test the solution with a small amount of pH paper, we can see that it is extremely basic. We don't want this. We want the solution to be slightly acidic so that all the paraparietate that is present in this mixture is converted to metaparietate. So for this I'm going to use 40% nitric acid. I'm going to add this slowly to prevent any exotherm until the solution is acidic and all metaparietate has precipitated out from solution. You can see right as I added that last pipette of nitric acid that a large clump of metaparietate sort of crashed out of solution. So I'm going to check the pH now. This will focus. You may be able to see we are getting closer to neutral or acidic, which is what we want. So I'm going to continue adding a little bit more of the nitric acid until we get an acidic pH. You can see that basically all of that tannish slash white color is gone. And that's good. So, we check the pH one last time. We're slightly acidic, so I'm just going to add a further one pipette full of 40% nitric acid, and then I'll call it there. Perfect. So now, what I'm going to do is cool this down, add some uh, ice to the water bath here, to precipitate the product fully, or as fully as I can, and then I'm going to vacuum filter it. Next I'm going to do a test to make sure that this really is parietate. So first I've got a test tube here to which I'm going to add some copper 2 chloride, dihydrate, some potassium hydroxide, potassium persulfate, and potassium metaparietate. Then I'm going to add some water. If this really is metaparietate, then it should help oxidize the copper 2 to copper 3 which is a nice golden color. We should see it upon heating of the mixture. Upon further heating, this will turn even darker yellow gold.
This confirms that we do indeed have metaparietate present. It's interesting to note about this complex that it is stable in aqueous solution. So if I'm to add more water, it won't decompose at practically any concentration. However, if the pH stays nice and high, then we shouldn't have too much of a problem. This was the chlorine-free synthesis of potassium metaparidate from potassium iodate. I really hope you enjoyed. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. This video would not have happened without their support. Thank you.